Hey guys, welcome back. I am so excited to share with you my top 20 DIY Dollar Tree pumpkin fall decor crafts. So this is gonna be a pumpkin palooza. Oh my goodness, you guys. So many fun and fabulous DIYs and crafty decor ideas that you guys can use in your fall decorating. So if y'all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia's Olivia's roommate at home and I love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a teeny tiny budget. Listen, y'all don't have to break the bank to have a fabulous, amazing home. Now, if you love to craft and decorate on a budget, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It's totally free. Punch that bell. It will update you every time I post a new video. Also, follow me over on Facebook. I have a fun little free group page. You guys can post photos of your home decor and DIY projects, as well as tons of DIY ideas over there. So you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. First, a Dollar Tree DIY. I want to share with you how to make a super adorable pumpkin wreath, and we're going to make a wooden beaded wreath. Okay, so from the Dollar Tree, or you guys can also grab these at Hobby Lobby, you're going to find one of these wire wreath frame forms. And I was just at Hobby Lobby the other day and scooped one up. Now, this one I have left over from Dollar Tree, but you're basically going to clip the little wire tops off, and then once you have that done, you can wrap the handle. Now, as you can see, I over clipped just a little bit, so part of my wreath form kind of came unbuckled there but it's okay because you can pretty much glue it all back together so I'm using this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just wrapping the, the top part of my pumpkin and then I decided to wrap actually the entire thing with nautical rope number one it's going to give my little wreath form a lot more stability and number two it just looks super adorable and so ready for fall Okay, the other idea I have for you guys is to just grab a wreath form and kind of create something similar with just a circle wreath form. And I'm gonna share that with you guys a little bit later in this video, how you can kind of create a cute little pumpkin goodie or fall uh, wreath form in a similar fashion without having the actual pumpkin wreath form. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take these beads. You guys know the beads have been all the rage forever now, but I got these off of Amazon. They're already in the natural wood color. Now you can find some at Dollar Tree. Sometimes they're colored and sometimes they're in a natural wreath form, but basically you're just gonna take and you're gonna load up the little um, prongs for the pumpkin part with beads. We're gonna make a super kind of cool, um, just chic farm pumpkin wreath. And I will tell you, I did see this craft um, on the shabby tree, which I love Barb. Say hey to Barb for me. She is absolutely amazing, has the best ideas. Go check her out if you're not following her. Definitely go follow her. But, so I decided to give it a whirl on my own. Of course, I always like to do my own little twist on it. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish loading up the little prongs um, of the pumpkin wreath form with these beads. I think I did a pumpkin wreath form for you guys last year and maybe we used mesh on it. I actually totally cannot remember, <laughs> but these are so fun to play with and get creative with. And I just thought the beaded look, I know it's totally in. So here's how it turned out. Now to reattach the little um, prongs, you're just going to take your bead all the way to the end and hot glue that back on there. And you do wanna give it some time to dry and be very generous with your hot glue as well. Now you guys know me, I love my bows. So I decided to take my little bow maker this is just the easy bow maker. Hey, you guys can grab one on Amazon. Um, Deco Exchange, they're super cheap. And so I'm gonna make a quick little bow. When I start into my bow making season, I love to cheat and use this because it allows me to use a little bit less ribbon, but also get a really great little bow. Now, if you guys want to see more Christmas bows and fun bows, I have a great little um, DIY bow video for you. It's gonna be in the description box of this YouTube video. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is just add one more little ribbon. So this ribbon is actually from Hobby Lobby. I cheated and I went ahead and grabbed fall ribbon because my Dollar Tree definitely doesn't have very many fall goodies out, to be honest with you guys. I'm using a lot of stuff left over from last season. I do like to repurpose and reuse a lot of my stuff as well. I'm tying the bow off in the center with this little jute twine. And that way, you know, you don't see any hardware. Um, you guys could also use wire or whatever. So I'm just gonna tie it on and then I'm gonna give it a good fluffing. It does look a little bit limp <laughs> and um, sad, but once we have it all fluffed up, which is really the secret to my bows, also a quick little idea for you guys is to always try to use wired ribbon. Wired ribbon is going to stand up to a bit of fluffing and all of that fun stuff. 
I know the perfect place I'm going to put this. It's either going to hang right outside my front door or on my little kitchen. Um, I have this cute little hook that I like to put seasonal wreaths on. Here is how it turned out. I'm super pumped. I also just might be setting it um, somewhere. It'd be cute to set in front of like a little pumpkin pitcher or just kind of how I displayed it in this um, video. And these pumpkins are... For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how you can take some of these Dollar Tree little ceramic pumpkins and hot glue them together to make a super cute little pumpkin topiary. So the little ceramic pumpkins that you can buy at Dollar Tree are going to have little holes in the bottom of them. And these are out right now in your stores. All you have to do is punch the little sticker through and add some dibble dabbles of hot glue to the very base of them and just stack them together. For this one, I decided to do an orange, green, and orange. And then I'm just gonna take some little fall leaves here. Again, these are also from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue them in and around the base of where I had kind of hot glued the pumpkins together. So in between the spaces of your topiary that you're creating, you are gonna see a little bit of glue. So you really want to kind of cover that up with just a splash of burlap or leaves or some berries like I'm doing. The next thing I wanted to do was take some of that leftover pumpkin, it's just, this ribbon is so cute. I got it on Amazon, um, but I'm gonna use this and make a cute little bow at the top. So I'm kind of pressing the center part of my bow down and then just creating kind of some little bow loops. And then I'm gonna kind of cascade the ribbon down the side of the pumpkin topiary. The next thing I added to the top of my pumpkin was a little bit of check ribbon and then some raffia, but you guys could really get so creative with this, or you could just kind of make it just very, a lot more chill and less fancy than how I now for this next DIY, I actually want to share with you guys how I'm using the little scrap pieces of wood. They're left over from um, my back patio project from last summer, but I'm just going to take and hot glue all three of them together. They were originally like little um, slats for the railing to keep Bitty Bear inside. Bitty Bear is my puppy dog, so I just... Um, made four of them. I was thinking I was going to spell out fall, but I ran out of time to find the lettering for it. So I may go back and add lettering to the front of these. So that's another idea. I'm painting them different colors because I thought that would just be a fun thing to let my eye dance over. So I chose yellow and orange, some greens, and then a quick little aqua. Um, the yellow is a little bit bright for fall, I kind of feel like, but you know, since I ran out of orange, I kind of have to make do. I do love this pretty muted green though. I think it's so soft and a nice cozy vibe. And you guys could also paint these cream. That would be another idea if you're doing shabby chic decor. And if you love pink pumpkins or purple pumpkins, go for it, you guys. Now I'm going to make this stem and I'm going to use the little Dollar Tree wooden cube blocks. I'm going to hot glue four of them together and then stain them with the Antique Waverly Wax stain. And I will tell you to um, leave a spot at the bottom without the wax because once you apply the wax, it makes it really hard for the hot glue to stick. That's what's been going on with mine anyway. So just leave that bottom side unstained that you're going to be hot gluing to the top of your pumpkin. I'm also taking this Dollar Tree sponge brush and I'm just going to sponge some of that wax onto the front of them. I think these turned out so adorable. I've always wanted to do some wooden pumpkins and I've never really taken the time to, so this is the perfect opportunity. Now I'm going to take and make this cute little bow. So I just took a piece of burlap ribbon and I'm tying the center of it. So you just make like a cute little bow tie. You take the ribbon, you just squinch it together and then add some jute twine to the center. Hot glue that to the little top part of your pumpkin and bam, you have such a festive little creation. I also had this cute little orange and um, burlap colored ribbon from Dollar Tree. I wish I would have stocked up on more because I'm already out of it. I've been doing a lot of fun projects with this, but it's so cute and I love the checkered aspect of it. Maybe I'll check back at Dollar Tree. I seriously doubt that they have any more, but maybe I might be able to also find some at Hobby Lobby. I don't know, but I'm adding that to the center part of my little pumpkins and I really had to tie really tiny bows and these are just bows like you would tie a shoelace with. Um, but here is how they turned out. I think they look so cute in this three-tiered tray. 
so easy to do on a total budget. Just pop out and grab some scrap wood, or sometimes you can even go into your local um, hardware store and ask them about some scrap wood. And then if you don't, if you are doing the Jenga block pumpkin project that I did earlier in this video, you guys could also just gl hot glue several little jingle Jenga blocks together and make some mini pumpkins that are just like this. So I always try to think of ideas to make things versatile and totally budget friendly for you guys. I hope you're loving this one and our insane. For the first Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take four of these wooden Dollar Tree signs. They have a little pumpkin cutout and they're in the regular fall seasonal decor section. I'm going to take another Dollar Tree sign and this is a little bit smaller one and I'm just going to hot glue that to the back of these four signs. So what I want to do is make a large pumpkin sign. I'm also using these popsicle sticks to reinforce the little center boards there so they don't weeble wobble around and bam now we have a large wooden sign you guys I'm so crushing on Dollar Tree for putting these large wooden sign pieces out the next thing I'm going to do is take this Dollar Tree felt pumpkin cutout and a couple of little pieces of scotch tape and I scotched tape the felt pumpkin to um, the board part that way it doesn't wiggle around as much and then I'm also putting um, paper towels down around the whole project um, so I don't get wood stain or this is actually like an antique wax um, on my little table here. I also put on gloves because that wax is really messy. Now I'm taking a Dollar Tree sponge brush. This is the larger sponge brush and I'm adding the Waverly antique wax to the sponge brush and I'm just gently sponging it onto the wood. I was able to get larger spots um, with larger bits of the wax or the antique stain on there but I did have to really kind of push that wax into these smaller parts so I put a little bit of wax into the lid and that way I could get it up on the tips of my sponge brush that's just a little tip if you guys are doing this project and so I'm really excited for this one because I think it's going to look really cool and rustic and I have the perfect space to put this in this is a great um, idea too if you guys just have a piece of wood that's like a scrap piece of wood I didn't happen to have one now look how magical that is I honestly it doesn't take much I just love these reveals I love doing little mats like this but look how amazing that pumpkin came out now Dollar Tree also carries furniture polish markers in their kind of hardware section so I'm taking one of those markers and I'm just going in and along the outlines of the actual pumpkin to kind of bring a little bit more dimension to it if you wanted to you could also bust out you know some brown paint or some different colored paint the other thing I wanted to do was to cover up the little holes in the top that the sign had in it that Dollar Tree put in originally to hang and I'm just using a piece of the Dollar Tree burlap kind of jute um, rope or just like a burlap ribbon and I hot glue that to the top of it and then here is how my little wooden pumpkin sign turned out and I'll share with you guys a little bit later in this video how to do the um, bead rope garland that I added to the top which I felt like was the perfect touch um, and I just used some beads from Amazon and then um, some yarn from the Dollar Tree. Dollar, our Dollar Tree has been putting out yarn recently in the Crafter Square section so I have been um, just kind of stocking up on that but I think this looks so fun and fabulous on a total budget especially if you want to add a little bit of rustic decor you could also string some lights in and around the top of it that would be a fun idea as well. <laughs> For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take these carvable Dollar Tree pumpkins and I'm going to remove the top and what we're going to do is create a beautiful decoupage pumpkin. So I painted them white with just some basic chalk paint and I let that dry. The next step is to find a napkin and remove the white backing from your napkin and then you can plan on using some Mod Podge or glue to attach it to your pumpkin. You could also even use a spray adhesive. I like Mod Podge but use whatever suits your fancy and whatever you guys have in your stash. So I'm just taking a generous helping of Mod Podge and I'm going to run that all the way around my pumpkin. Thank you. 
Once I had all the Mod Podge, I then began to apply the napkin. And I am going to tell you guys that doing a pumpkin, I definitely had some little wrinkles in it. But just trim it off, take a deep breath, add Mod Podge to the base, and then add it over the top. The other thing I recommend with this is to let your layers dry as you go. For this DIY, I was trying to work quickly so I could have it to share with you guys on this video, but it would have been lovely if I would have just done one section at a time and then patiently let it dry and then did another section because my fingers had a tendency to kind of lift off some of the napkin on the other side. So just a little note, if you're doing this at home and you have the time to wait and let it dry, I also suggest to just use sections of the napkin. That seemed to work better. I tried one using the whole napkin. So hopefully you guys can learn from some of my trial and error and you can tell I get pretty sloppy with my Mod Podge, but again, just have fun with it. This is just a fun little pumpkin. The other thing I did was I used some of the Dollar Tree wood pieces um, to make a little stem with, and I'm also thinking about maybe even painting those or adding a fun little jewel. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree wooden dowels and then just some of these cute little Dollar Tree gourds and pumpkins and I'm going to take my scissors and poke a hole in the bottom of them, add some hot glue and then push the dowel into it. This was the best way that I found to create um, a pumpkin pick for inexpensive and I already had these dowels on hand. Dollar Tree is selling wooden dowels in their crafters square section and then you can very easily pop these into your tree and they seem to stay. I tried to kind of just put them in earlier and they tend to roll off but with these longer dowels they set perfectly into this four foot tree and so that was a great solution for that. So that's just a little tip when you're adding some of these larger pumpkins if you are doing a fall tree. I feel like you could also use shish kebab sticks. I didn't have those on hand but I felt like those would have been a really great option and probably you would even get more in a shish kebab stick. I believe they sell those at Dollar Tree too. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're doing like a larger tree. This was only a four foot tree. So I may um, have to pick some of those up if I do do a larger tree. So, oh my goodness, as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video. I so love to hear what your feedback is. It really helps me know what DIYs to plan for you all in the future. I just love to share with you guys how you can have a gorgeous home on a budget. And just because you maybe can't spend a ton of money doesn't mean you can't have boutique beautiful decor and when you craft it is so good for your heart and soul and it just makes things so lovely and I just thank you all for being here I love you all so so much and you're such a blessing to me um, this little community is just amazing so thank you guys again and I will talk to you very soon take one of the ceramic pumpkins that I had painted white and I'm just going to begin to run my marker. This is just a little gold paint marker. They sell these at Dollar Tree and also I find mine at Michael's Craft Store and I'm just going to trace lines down the little grooves and ridges of the pumpkins. Then I'm going to go around the pumpkin. 
I'm gonna make this in a checkerboard pattern with the pink and white. So shout out to my girl, Deanne Mendoza. She paints some really beautiful Mackenzie Child inspired goodies on my Facebook group page. So you guys are definitely gonna have to join us over on my Livy's Romantic Home Facebook group page. There are so many inspiring um, people over there posting so many fun things. But I had to give her a shout out because she does some really pretty pink and white shabby chic designs. So I'm just taking this pink acrylic craft paint and it's in the pink blush, the apple barrel craft paint. You find that at Walmart and I'm just going to paint my little squares. I'm using a smaller brush to do this. That way I have a little bit better control. You can also use a paint pen marker if you feel like that the painting part would be hard for you. Remember to give yourself grace. This does not have to be perfect. Also, it's just a one dollar pumpkin so if you're really nervous and afraid to try this you can always if you mess up just paint over a solid color i have had to do that before so i want you guys to try it out and don't be afraid to try this craft i did end up using two coats of the pink paint to get really great coverage now i'm going to do pink stripes for my top pumpkin and i'm just free handing this and i'm going every other one with the pink paint so i already have the white base down and then i'm just painting the pink stripes down and again i did do two to three coats with the apple barrel pink craft paint and now think about this you all can customize this to suit your decor so if you don't care for pink that's totally fine i know it's not quite a traditional fall color but a lot of my ladies out there that love shabby chic i wanted to just share this video with you guys because i always try to share as many styles as i can get out as the season progresses so i thought this would inspire you for everybody that loves pink but if you don't love pink, go for purple or blue or gold or whatever style suits your fancy. Now I am going in with some gold paint and I do get my gold paint from Arteza Craft Company. It is such a beautiful metallic gold. I really love it. I'm almost out of it. So I am going to have to order some more, but I'm taking an even smaller brush and I'm running it down the grooves of um, my lines. So this is another little tip when you're painting these checks or these stripes. If you take a paint pen marker and outline them, um, outline your stripes or checks with a paint marker or even just a fine tip paintbrush, that is going to clean up some of your work where maybe you felt like your lines were a little bit wobbly or not perfect. And I will tell you, I was so nervous to start trying to paint these checks and stripes. And I'll, and I'll admit, my first round of DIYs on these, I look back on it, I'm like, oh my goodness, it, it wasn't as good. I feel like I've gotten a lot better, but I've practiced a lot. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. In the McKenzie Child's um, creations, the ones that I have from them, you can see the artist paint lines in them and they're not perfect as well. So just a little tip there to give you guys a little bit more confidence and grace. Now I'm taking this cute little basket that I found at the thrift store and I'm popping some styrofoam into this. And if you want to create a topiary with these foam pumpkins, all you have to do is pop a little wooden dowel, popsicle stick, floral stem, anything that has some strength to it into the foam pumpkins and then pop it into your styrofoam. I'm also adding um, a popsicle stick to the top of this and then I did add some hot glue it's just going to stabilize it to keep it kind of from wobbling around these are not going to be outside they're just going to be in my home um, so I did add some hot glue to the base of my pumpkins and top that off now I'm sharing with you guys two different ideas for how to do these pumpkins where you can add a floral arrangement where you add some pretty florals with these pretty leaves and different flowers I did get the brown neutral leaves at Michael's. Just a little tip there. So there are so many ways that you all can style a topiary. You can add the florals to the base. And here is how that is gonna look if you wanna do a beautiful floral arrangement. And then here is the other option where you remove the florals and just use your topiary as is. I kind of do like this topiary without the florals, this time just for me personally, because I wanna really be able to see that beautiful floral pattern that I decoupaged 
onto the base of it. But again, whatever you're going for in your decor, you could add. The next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna share with you how to make a super adorable, easy little Dollar Tree pumpkin blooming pumpkin floral, I guess. <laughs> so grab one of those Dollar Tree buckets. I chose the P, it's what my last name starts with. And then I'm using this shish kebab. I'm going to kind of bend it off and pop it in to the foam pumpkin. So Dollar Tree's putting out the cutest, oh my goodness, you guys, the cutest little pumpkins this year. They're buffalo check plaid, so we don't even have to worry about making our own buffalo check plaid pumpkin. Um, but anyway, any pumpkin will do. Honestly, pop them in to your little floral. And then I realized one of them really got a little over pop there, but hey, add some moss and I promise you I'm going to fix that. <laughs> um, and Dollar Tree also carries moss as well. So here's what we have so far. Okay. This is looking a little awkward with the two pumpkins just kind of hanging out here to the side, but we're going to add some corn and really jazz things up. Dollar Tree is also carrying two packs of corn. So funny thing is, is they're carrying a two pack of corn for a dollar, but they're, they're still selling the individual corn for a dollar. I guess I need to look at them and see if maybe there's a size difference. I did trim the corn down just a little bit. It seemed to be a little bit kind of like large and floppy, but at least for this arrangement, fine anywhere else. Anyway, I'm taking with these Dollar Tree pre-made bows. I'm going to hot glue it to the top of my cute little pea bucket <laughs> and I'm going to pop in some velvet pumpkins. I'm just kind of get, getting creative and making a little bit of a wild pumpkin bouquet, but you guys have fun with it really. You can make some fun things with all the Dollar Tree goodies. And um, the next thing I also wanted to do was pop one into the back of this and kind of balance it out. Now I'm taking some of this super adorable gnome ribbon. You can find it on Amazon. I made a cute little easy bow, pop that into the front. I didn't even have to hot glue it or anything. It just popped right underneath that pumpkin. And then I added some extra ribbon, kind of shushed it up there. And voila, I have a fabulous blooming pumpkin bouquet. So this is for all of you guys that are super big pumpkin lovers and you maybe don't want to work with flowers, but you might want to have some fun with some pumpkins. Here is how it turned out. I popped it onto my little side table, added a candle, my cute little gnome jar, a cute little sign, and some more corn, and voila, we have a fabulous little vignette of a fall goodness. Now, hey, listen, Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? I love to hear what you guys are up to. And I also need to know, what is your do, what is your start date for fall decorating? I'm actually going to be starting some this week. So you guys definitely be looking for that. Drop that comment down below. I have a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card that I'm giving away. The details are gonna be in the description box of my video. Thank you, thank you guys for being here. And here is the best most wonderful thing in the world is Benji Bear. He's getting a super cuddle fest with my daughter. So she loves to wrap him up in a blanket and just chill out with him while she's listening to her headphones and reading a book. How adorable. He looks like a little puppy Eskimo, but she cuddles him. We call it like a cuddle fest with Benji Bear. So he is getting his super cuddle down for all the Benji Bear fans. We love you guys. He loves you guys. And so for the next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you guys a super adorable little pumpkin. We're going to start out with one of the orange Dollar Tree pumpkins and just spray paint it white. Once I sprayed my pumpkin white, I did let it dry for about two to three hours. And then I'm using this piece of lace. This is the lace I use for all of my spray painting projects. And it's just an expensive thrift store, like polyester lace. So don't anybody cringe, it's not an antique vintage piece, but I am gonna lay it on top of my pumpkin. And then I decided to go with this really beautiful um, crimson color. And I'm just going to spray paint that on top of the pumpkin. And oh my goodness, you guys are going to be in awe when you see the finished project. And remember, just choose any color that you're decorating with that you love. Look at this gorgeous beauty. How pretty did this come out? Oh my goodness, I am so crushing on this. You could always add a pretty bow and some bling, but I wanna live with it for just a minute before I really go over the top and add too many goodies to that. So here is how the entire thing turned out. And I'm telling you, my little assistant bear today 
was just such a blessing to me. He is so adorable and he brings me so much joy, especially since my kiddos are off to school now and he definitely keeps me on my toes as well. So comment and let me know as always, what was your favorite DIY in this video? I love to hear which DIYs you guys love to see me do. Um, it kind of helps me plan for some of the next ones and which colors are you all decorating for spring? Now I do have a giveaway going on right now. It's a $50 gift card to burlapfabric.com. So don't forget to comment down below. Now the secret question is, what is your favorite Halloween candy treat? If so, for the first Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna create a super adorable pumpkin banner using these Dollar Tree wooden cutouts. I'm painting two of them with this orange acrylic paint. And then I'm going to take three of them and I'm going to Mod Podge this pretty paper onto the front of them. So I'm just tracing out the paper to fit the size of the wooden cutout. And then once I have that done, I'm gonna add a generous layer of Mod Podge. Be generous with your Mod Podge here because the wooden cutouts do absorb the Mod Podge quickly. So you kind of have to work a little bit quickly. Now I'm adding the little McKenzie Child's checkerboard kind of um, scrapbook paper. And I did get this at Hobby Lobby. And then you're just going to add a another really generous layer of Mod Podge to the front of your wooden cutout and voila, you have a bunch of really cute little pumpkins. Now I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree furniture marker pen. you find it in the automotive section at Dollar Tree or the fix it section. And I'm just going to use it to color some little ridges in my pumpkin just to give it a little bit more detail. Now this step is optional, but that little bit of detail kind of is gonna make your item look a little bit more high end. I also colored the pumpkin stem. I also had some paints out, so I decided to add a, a little bit more detail with some white paint. So I'm just using some of the Dollar Tree acrylic white paint, and I'm adding some stripes down the kind of the front of my pumpkins just to give it a little bit of dimension. It gives it that boutique finish. Once I have that step finished, I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree floral wire. I chose the gold and I'm just going to wire my pumpkins together. So I'm leaving several inches between each one and I'm wrapping the piece of wire around the top and that's going to help it hang nicely. I hate when I make a garland and the things like flop around. So the wire is actually the perfect way to make them hang just um, where they hang perfectly. I hope that makes sense. And there's already little holes in the top of this. Now you could always use some jute wine as well or any pretty ribbon would work. Here it is popped into my beautiful fall display and oh my goodness this is probably one of my favorite videos I have ever made for you guys so stay tuned because we are going to do some amazing crafts and I'm this one. I'm going to take one of those little Dollar Tree fall pumpkins and this gold Dollar Tree marker. You get this in the crafters square section and I'm just going to draw lines down where the pumpkin um, it just already naturally has lines so you're just going to do that around the entire pumpkin. I decided to make checks on this pumpkin. You could always just make stripes if you wanted to. So I'm gonna take my gold pen and I'm just going to draw a line all the way around the pumpkin. And I did draw two more lines around the pumpkin. I had made one, you saw me looking. I made another one. I was just checking to see how many lines I had drawn around it. And really it's up to you how many lines you wanna draw around it. Now this is a little bit tedious because the pumpkin is has the ridges um, so give yourself a little bit of grace but it's kind of fun to, to do something hand painted now I'm using one of the little Dollar Tree paint brushes and I'm using one of the smaller ones and then I'm using the white Waverly chalk paint to go in and begin to paint my squares and I liked using the chalk paint over the Dollar Tree acrylic paint because I find that their acrylic paint is a little bit um, too thin when you're painting on top of something dark. It's not bad for some projects, but I would have to do a lot of layers on this one and I really didn't want to paint 
that many layers when there's a lot of like little detail work to do. This was already a little bit of a project. So just a little note there to use a little bit nicer of a paint if you have that or if you just have the extra time, that's totally fine too. So you're just going every other one to make the checks. Now, if you're gonna do Buffalo check, you could always add in another color. I'm going just for the brown and white check on this one. I'm kind of doing like a little bit of a spin on Mackenzie Child, except for we're not doing the black and white. For this, we're doing the brown and white. So I thought that would be fun. I know not everybody does um, black and white and I wanted to show you guys just a little bit of a different idea. So you can think about a different color with the checks. But I think this is so fun and fabulous and just a different way to decorate for fall. It's always nice to throw that little handmade piece in and um, it just gives it some flair and some fun and some whimsy. So just continue to paint your checks, give yourself grace and have fun with it. The other thing I wanted to let you all know that I did do that I didn't show in this DIY was I went back over the checks with my gold paint pen and you'll see that right here. You can see I kind of outlined it with the gold paint pen. That's kind of an optional step if you guys wanted to do that. Now I used a gold paint pen that I found at Michael's. You can always use the Dollar Tree gold DIY. I am so excited to share with you guys a Jenga block pumpkin. Okay, so you're going to need eight of the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks blocks and you're going to use three to start out with so you're going to take one and glue it sideways and then glue it to the center block here and you're going to turn that center block the opposite direction of the first block I hope that makes sense and then you're going to add a double of hot glue to the other side and then pop that in so it's kind of making like this little T formation I guess that's what you might call it and then you're going to do the exact same thing for the next block. So you're going to take a run a line of glue down it and then glue it to this one little spot here on the opposite block, turn the opposite direction and then <laughs> glue another one again to make that cute little T right there. And then you're gonna have two sets of those. And then you're going to glue the second block kind of a little bit like halfway out from the little T on the inside point. I hope that makes sense. Um, hopefully you guys can just kind of follow what I'm doing here, but basically you're just gonna glue a block on either side of it and then that's going to form your little pumpkin bumpkin. And then you guys can also, if you want to, you can add one more Jenga block down into the center. So I did that for mine, but I first I started painting them and I realized, hey, a Jenga block's gonna fit down into the center of this. I did just use some orange apple barrel craft paint from Walmart. In fact, I ran out. So before this pumpkin spice season is over, I'm definitely gonna be needing to go grab some more. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and paint this. And then again, I do glue another block into the center. Now I will tell you for this stem, you can get really creative with this. You can pop out into your yard and grab some little wooden stems or whatnot. And here I made two of them and you can see I glued another block into the center of that. And listen, I don't think all the Dollar Tree Jenga blocks are exactly shaped the same, unless I did something wrong with this DIY, but they didn't quite all fit flush against each other. If that drives you crazy, just cover it with a cute little bow. I also had some of these pretty creative colors um, with some of the aquas, which they're showing out a lot in the home decor stores. So I did use some aqua and then just some um, Waverly Antique Wax. I swear you guys, I've been using the same wax for almost my whole DIY career on YouTube. Um, so a little bit goes a long way and I'm just using the little Dollar Tree cubes. Um, they come in the crafter square and there's a ton of them in a packet and that's going to be my little pumpkin stem. I honestly, it's still about 90 degrees out and I just did not want to pop out and look around in the yard for, um, you know, real wood. So I'm also taking some raffia and I'm going to tie that off in the center and then add that to the top part of my pumpkin just to give it like a little decor and embellishment. And honestly, so we've been on vacation and my little puppy dog, Benji Bear, he had to stay behind. He was actually at what they call um, a camp, a little camp out for puppy dogs. And um, anyway, he's just been feeling like he really needs it. For the first Dollar Tree Fall Decor DIY, we're going to create these super adorable buffalo check plaid 
pumpkins using the buffalo check plaid scarves from Dollar Tree. Now if you can't find these, Hobby Lobby also has buffalo check plaid fabric as well as the Dollar Tree check their baby section. I found some really cute little fleece blankets. They're more of a gray and white but they would make great pumpkins as well. So go ahead and put your scarves next to each other and just begin to hot glue along the seam. Be careful not to burn yourself doing this. I went ahead and grabbed a little popsicle stick to go ahead and push them down because you don't want any holes in the edges of your project for your pumpkins. So continue to glue until you get a space big enough to fit about a pizza pan or a cookie sheet. We're going to use that to go ahead and trace out our pumpkin shape. So I'm just using a sharpie and I'm tracing around my little um, pizza pan and don't worry if you get little marks on the outside of your fabric because you're going to be gathering the fabric and you're not really going to see those marks anyway. So once you have your circle traced out you can go ahead and begin to cut that with a really nice pair of sharp scissors. Now I will tell you that the buffalo check plaid scarves from Dollar Tree are rather thin so if you do want a bit of a hardier pump you may want to go ahead and go to Hobby Lobby and check for their fabric there. But this worked really great and was super budget friendly. So I'm using a really large needle because I am not a sewing girl and I'm just taking some larger kind of thread and I'm just looping in and out and in and out with my stitch here. So this is super easy. Just take your needle and push it through and just go over and under and over and under and over and under. Basically what you're doing is just gathering your fabric because you want to create a little pouch. This part does not have to be perfect. You can leave about a half inch to an inch between each loop as you gather over and under. So once you guys get to the end, you can go ahead and just tie a little knot in one end of your string. That way it doesn't pull through from your gathering and you can leave the needle on the other end or just leave it loose because we're going to go ahead and stuff it. I just used some pillow stuffing out of the pillow that we weren't using. We happen to be kind of pillow hoarders here. I have a little thing for like pillows and blankets. Comment and let me know if you guys do as well. So anyway, go ahead and stuff your pumpkin to your liking. Now I I like to kind of overstuff mine but be careful don't overstuff it so much that your little um, loops break and then once you have it stuffed you can go ahead and pop outside and gather up some twigs or a little bit of grapevine I used some grapevine that I had been using in some of my summer decor but you can also just use a stick from outside and then go ahead and kind of make a little spot down in your cotton for your stem to go. You want your stem to probably reach to the bottom of your pumpkin and then you're just going to gather it closed and then tie it off really well. And I'm a safety girl and so I did tie it about two or three times. And you can be done with your pumpkin after this step if you want to or you can go a little extra and go ahead and take thread your um, needle again with your thick string and what I like to go ahead and do once I tie that little top off is go ahead and start from the top or the bottom either way and you can push your needle through to the end be careful not to poke yourself but if you do this process that is going to kind of gather your pumpkin in the bottom and make it a little bit more flat again this step is really optional it's just if you want to go ahead and do this and it also helps if you can kind of go ahead and take your needle and thread and stitch the top closed just a little bit. I just kind of gather it. Trust me, I am not a sewing person at all. And I'm sure if you guys are sewing people, you'll probably know that by my wonkiness here. But um, I did just go back and forth a couple times in and out of my pumpkins. You just go through the top, find the needle in the bottom, push it through, and then push it back up through. And that's going to give your pumpkin like a little flat bottom. And then you can go ahead and tie that off. And it's also going to give a little bit more security you know, in and around that little top piece. And don't worry if a little bit of the fabric got frayed. 
Of course, the scarf from Dollar Tree is a bit of a cheap fabric, but it comes out so super adorable. You guys, this was about $2 to make. I mean, truly next to nothing and about the same size as the Hobby Lobby pumpkins, which I have been told completely sell out. I made three of them. Look how adorable they are. Oh my goodness, you guys, I am so crushing on these. I was so pleased with how well these came out so fun. I really encourage you guys to try these. And also, if you don't find a buffalo check plaid fabric, you can use an old sweater, an old shirt, an old flannel, maybe from your husband's closet that he's getting rid of, um, or even from your kid's closet. Pre DIY, we're going to create a splatter screen pumpkin. Now, my Dollar Tree only had two splatter screens, so I picked up this wire mesh round circular. Um, I think it's a topper to keep flies out, maybe. Anyway, I had to unscrew the little thing from the side, and now I'm just going to take each one of the handles from the splatter screen and bend them backward. Now, the way I found to do this was to take some wire and just wire these first two pieces together while they were standing up, because you want your pumpkin to stand up. Now, if you don't want your pumpkin to stand up, you can always just remove the little splatter screen handles and you could hang this. Now I'm adding that last little screen. You can see there's still that hole in it, but don't worry, we're going to cover that hole. I'm using Dollar Tree floral wire and I'm just wiring the center part together. Now comes the fun part. I decided to add deco mesh to this. You could always just paint your splatter screen pumpkin with some orange paint. That would totally work too. I was fresh out of orange paint and I had this deco mesh I needed to use up. So I'm taking and cutting several pipe cleaners in half and then I'm going to pipe cleaner the top part of the splatter screen and then the bottom part as well fairly close to the edge because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the deco mesh and I ended up using four rolls of Dollar Tree deco mesh and you're going to take the deco mesh and just center it in between each one of your pipe cleaners and tie it together two times that's going to be on there really nice and then pull it a little bit tight not super tight but just so it lays flush against your splatter screen and then you can flip it over and run it down the front. So as you can see I'm tying everything in the back that way the front of our pumpkin is clean from any of our pipe cleaners. So you're just going to wrap it around and then again center it on top of that pipe cleaner and just crisscross the pipe cleaner twice and it is on there. This is so easy you guys. Oh my goodness you're gonna have so much fun with this one. So I'm winding the deco mesh around this twice. That way it covers the um, little splatter screen. And then I'm moving about an inch away from my last bit of ties and I'm beginning to tie again. So you can just center your ties about an inch apart as you go down the splatter screen. This does not have to be perfect, you guys. Just take a deep breath and have fun with this one. And then you'll just take that deco mesh and continue to wind it around. And if you didn't really have pipe cleaners, you could also use some floral wire. That would work super great. And you don't necessarily even have to go one inch apart. I was really trying to be very careful with my mesh because I only had four rolls of the pumpkin color and I did not want to run out. So as as you can see I'm gathering it again and I'm just centering the mesh on top of the pipe cleaner you twist the pipe cleaner twice and voila you can keep going with this now the Dollar Tree deco mesh for some reason it doesn't come all the way on one roll so you could see that the end of the roll um, kind of started right there or the end of the piece but here's how it should look it's just tied on the front and then you're gonna see your work on the back again here's my ties about an inch apart and then and I'm beginning to add more ties to kind of space about another inch apart.
So you're going to continue to do this method where you tie the deco mesh to the back of your splatter screen and then just wind it around the front. So I'm tying it at the bottom and I'm tying it at the top. And when I say tie, I'm just taking those pipe cleaners and crisscrossing them over just like you would tie up a loaf of bread where you just kind of twist it together. So there's no fancy secret to this. Again, see, you can just see that I'm pulling the mesh down and then winding it back up and tying it at the base and tying it at the top. And those ties will help your deco mesh not move to side to side, especially if you're going to be putting this outside or if you're going to make this into a hanging wreath. Because at the end of this, you guys are going to be so wowed. This is probably one of my favorite projects I have ever done. I've been wanting to do one of those pumpkin wreaths, but our Dollar Tree has not got in any of the pumpkin wire wreath forms and this whole time I've been hoping to find one I keep thinking what if I used the splatter screens to create kind of a setting pumpkin wreath so that's how this is going to turn out and again you guys can modify this by taking the handles off and just hanging it from your door but again I'm just continuing to loop the mesh over on itself the other thing that you might want to keep an eye out for I just always grab a rolls of mesh but Dollar Tree has several different colors of orange so luckily I had three of the same kind and only one was different so here's how my pumpkin looks after I have all my mesh tied on and then I didn't cut my ties I left them on because I knew I wanted to drape some Dollar Tree ribbon down the front this is just the polka dot ribbon and I cut it about half the length of my pumpkin you can always make it longer or shorter but I am going to put a big bow at the top now I'm cutting a triangle upwards at the end of my ribbon that's just a little extra special step that's going to give it that boutique finish so you just cut that little triangle up and then I'm taking some deco mesh roping this step is totally optional and you're really not even going to see that much of it but it does give a little bit of dimension and if you always wondered what to do with this here's a fun little way to use it is just to add it into some of your wreaths or your florals again just to give it a little bit of dimension and it does look kind of funny right here like this but we're going to make a big beautiful bow so I have a big bow video for you you can also use your easy bow maker if you have one or if you know how to hand tie a bow the easy bow maker is a life Saver, saver for my fingers though. So I just popped a pipe cleaner in and then I'm using the Dollar Tree plaid ribbon and I'm going to make my bow six inches across from the center. So you just pop your ribbon in, you measure six inches on one side and six inches on the other. Honestly, this is the easiest bow I've ever made. I honestly think it's even easier than my Olivia bows and so many of you all love my Olivia bow. I'll link that bow video down below. It's a Christmas video but it will work for fall. So and that's for if you guys don't have the bow maker. Now I'm also adding in this beautiful pumpkin ribbon. I did find this on Amazon, but Dollar Tree has been killing it this year with their ribbon choices. I did want to make this just a little bit extra special with this ribbon, so I popped that one in next. Again, six inches across on either side, and then take your scissors and cut upward to give it that boutique finish. Now this pretty pumpkin ribbon came from Michaels. Again, it's kind of that pretty specialty ribbon. I wanted to mix in this ribbon because it's going to match the Dollar Tree plaid ribbon back behind there and you're just going to twist it to make sure your ribbon pieces are standing out really nice and pretty and there's also a little an end piece on the bow maker that you can put your spool of ribbon on. I always get so excited when I'm making my bows. I forget to put my spool of ribbon on there. I know some of you guys even comment and tell me to use it and I just honestly totally forget. Now I did splurge when the McKenzie Child's barn sale happened and I bought some of their gorgeous ribbon and let me tell you, this ribbon is so beautiful and well made. It was definitely worth that extra splurge. So this one I'm just going five inches across on either side and I chose it to do as the third piece of ribbon because I really want it to show off. And you guys know I've been crushing on McKenzie Child's checks and this is just so pretty. And if you guys can see on one side it's lined with gold. Oh my goodness, this ribbon is so high quality. 
and it really makes a difference for sure. Um, but you could also use Buffalo Check if that's what you have on hand, no worries at all. Okay, so now I'm just going to add in my pumpkin ribbon as the last little straw, and this one I made the smallest loop. It's only about four inches across on either side. And then once I have that done, I am just going to pop it off and pipe cleaner the whole thing to gather easy peasy. And then the best part is, is oh my goodness, you guys, my favorite part ever is fluffing the bows. Fluffing up your bow is really where you're going to have the magic happen. So you take your pipe cleaner, wrap it around the back first, and it's okay if you're going to smash it down a little bit here, but you want to get it really tightly on here, but not so tight that you break your pipe cleaner because I've done that before too. Now see how I'm pulling the loops out on my bow and fluffing them and making them puffy? Don't forget to do that. Don't let your bow just sit there lump without any fluffing. It really needs some TLC after it's been through all of that. And if you use wired ribbon, that's going to make it stand up even better. Now I'm just going to take that pipe cleaner that was on the back of the uh, bow and I'm going to attach it to the top of my pumpkin, just the very top loop and again more fluffing you guys know I am gonna fluff 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 until they're so puffy and they look really boutique high-end on a budget of course the next thing I want to do is add some of those Dollar Tree leaves so they have those burlap leaves and I'm just gonna pop those in I didn't even add hot glue because they just set really easily down into the deco mesh so I added orange leaves one on either side and then I'm adding the brown leaves one on either side and again all the leaves are from Dollar Tree and then you guys know me I was poking around and I also decided to add in some pretty raffia just to give it that fall vibe Dollar Tree carries raffia so fun and then of course I had to add some glam um, little leaves to either side and here is the finished product and oh my goodness you guys I am so over the moon and love with how this turned out. I think it looks so high end. I've seen these similar to these selling on Etsy for $100 or more. And we created this on such a small budget. And you guys definitely just use whatever you have on hand. It's kind of even how I dreamt up the idea. You guys know me, I really like to repurpose and reuse. And I'm trying to challenge myself to use everything I have in my craft stash, which I have for the next Dollar Tree DIY. I'm gonna take this pumpkin kisses and harvest wishes sign. I'm gonna pop the little raffia bow off. And Michael's had ribbon on sale that was 99 cents. So this was actually a dollar. I grabbed some in this little buffalo check plaid um, pattern and I'm just tying a very easy shoelace bow. So a shoelace bow is just a bow like you would tie your shoelaces. I'm popping it on with a dab of hot glue. Now think about this. When you look at a fall sign, you can easily change it and customize it to suit your decor just by adding a cute little customized ribbon. Sometimes you don't have to repaint the sign or go over the top doing crazy things, although I do do plenty of crazy things. <laughs> For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I want to share with you all how to take some of these glam jewels and they're just sticker jewels from the Dollar Tree and glam up some of these cute little Dollar Tree pumpkins. Now, I will tell you all that when you're using these little jewels, you don't necessarily have to use the hot glue with them, but I do because I did some of these last year and some of the little parts of the jewels kind of lifted off and I found that to be a little bit annoying. So you can use a little double dabble of hot glue and that will really get them to stick on really well. Now, the next thing I wanted to add was one of these beautiful glam jewels from totallydazzle.com. It's my sweet friend, Natalie, that runs that company Company and she's just amazing. She has really great deals. In fact, I think she's running a big sale right now. So check out totallydazzled.com. I'll leave the link to Natalie's um, Totally Dazzled site 
uh, in the description box of this YouTube video. Okay, so now I'm doing one of the ceramic pumpkins and I really like using these kind of amber colored jewels. Again, these were at the Dollar Tree. They also have white jewels and they have pink ones too. So if you guys love to do a pink fall or Halloween, you want to keep an eye out for that. And they are in the crafters square section. And again, I am just using some little dabs of hot glue to get those jewels to really stick on really well. And in total, I used two packages of jewels and then I did have some left over from that second packet and then of course I did add some beautiful bling to finish off this pumpkin I call these my Cinderella pumpkins they just remind me you know of a Cinderella getting all glammed up and jeweled up for the ball so here is how I'm displaying these and using these. I popped them into my cute little Dollar Tree lantern and I put one next to my little topiary. I think they're so nice to just mix in some of these bejeweled pumpkins into your regular fall decor. So I like to just kind of pop them in as a little accent and it really glams things up without being too totally over the top with these little small ones. You could go all in though and do some larger ones as well, depending on how much sparkle and shine that you love. And you could even make these as gifts or sell on a cute little Etsy site. Really, the sky is the limit. Have fun with this, get creative, and just go for it, you guys. And last but not least, we're gonna take a walk on the wild side. Again, I'm gonna use this Dollar Tree pumpkin. I'm gonna flip it over and I grab some Hobby Lobby, um, a crafty paper, and this is in that leopard print. Okay, so I have eyed some of the leopard designs for a while, but I've never really went for it just because I didn't know if I wanted to invest in leopard fall and then hate it in a year. But I think it's so adorable. So I'm taking a walk on the wild side and I'm gonna create one, see how I use it, see if I love it, and then maybe I'm going to go for some of those leopard pumpkins. Hey, this is the year to get crazy, do something fun and different with your home decor and your seasonal decor. So I'm just using some Mod Podge. I'm giving it a generous layer of Mod Podge and I pre-traced it and cut it out. That seems to make it easier than trying to put it on there and then cut around it. Um, that's just my little tip from what I'm learning with this. And then I'm adding a nice little layer of Mod Podge on the top and I'm using the waterproof Mod Podge. Again, you can grab from pretty much any craft store. I think Walmart even carries it. And the way you'll know it's waterproof, it has the blue label. So anyway, I'm gonna add some more Mod Podge to the stem of this and then get jazzy with the stem and add that beautiful gold glitter. This gold glitter is from Walmart. It's like two bucks, maybe 250, maybe three at the most and it goes a long way, let me tell you. Um, and then I'm just gonna take this leaf. Now this leaf was left over from another project. You guys are gonna have to go back and watch some of my videos. I'm having so much fun crafting. Um, but I am going to glam this leaf up. Hey, we need to add the maximum sparkle and shine with the pumpkin leaf and stem. Stem. Then I added a cute little um, dazzling jewel to the top and that's going to give it that extra little bit of sparkle and shine. And of course this is all optional, but how adorable did this come out? Oh my goodness, I think that this was probably one of my favorites that I've done in a while that's outside of the box with your normal fall decor. So as always, I ask that you guys comment and let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one will you be recreating? Now, I want you guys to comment down below the answer to my secret question. I'm giving away a $100 Hobby Lobby gift card. I need to know how you guys are taking a walk on the wild side for fall decor. Come on, let's get fun. Let's do just a little something tiny different. Maybe you're gonna try a different drink at your local coffee shop that's a fall related. Maybe you're gonna, you know, try a different fall candle. Maybe you're gonna buy a velvet pumpkin and do something different that's gonna step you outside of your comfort zone. Maybe you're gonna create an unusual new fall dish. Drop those comments down below, light up this com um, comment section with positivity, and I love y'all, and I thank you for being here. DIY, I wanna share with y'all how you can take one of the Dollar Tree ceramic pumpkins and give it some razzle dazzle, some spicy it up. <laughs> so I'm just using this pretty little turquoise. It's the aqua um, apple barrel paint from Walmart, and I'm just taking my paintbrush and I'm running it down those center pumpkin lines. I wanna kind of give it like a little bit of a glam flare, I guess you would say. 
um, by adding some stripes to my pumpkin. So this is just a fun idea. If you want to get a little bit creative and add in some fun colors into your fall decor, especially if you don't do the more traditional colors or if you do the traditional colors and you want to just use orange paint to jazz up some of these white pumpkins. I think the white pumpkins are adorable as is, but I do love to get really creative with my decor and just add in, you know, tons of just pretty shapes, colors. And I think the stripes are just a fun way to give your eye something to look at and add a little bit of dimension to this. And again, get creative. You could do pink, purple, black, whatever suits your fancy and floats your boat. I have been commenting to you guys that I've been noticing a lot of aqua being thrown into the fall decor this season, as well as navy blue. So take heart if you're not crazy about traditional colors. I will do traditional colors in my living room, but I'm probably going to think outside the box in some of my smaller, more girly spaces. So now that I had that finished, I decided to add some Mod Podge to the top of my little pumpkin and give it a really nice little glittered up stem. I think this is such a fun idea and it makes it look really customized. You know, if you go into a boutique, you'll notice those little flashy touches where there be jewels or a little bit of glitter or just something that's really going to kind of catch your eye and make it look somewhat unique. So this is a fun way. You could also do these for gifts or centerpieces if you were doing a bit of a tablescape. And again, just really get creative with your colors. So here's how it looks like so far with just the stripes. You could even add another touch and use your paint pen. I love this paint pen. It's actually a little bit, you know, more expensive. It's about $5 for the pen, but it goes quite a bit of a long way. And it's called the Deco Art Premium Paint Pen. I get it at Michael's. Or you can also order it off Amazon. I may have one linked to my Amazon store as well, but I'm using this to highlight because it really makes it look kind of gold. If you guys go on the Mackenzie Child's website, you're going to see some really funky pumpkins. So maybe it'll encourage you guys to get outside your box of, you know, thinking that it just has to be one way. That's what I'm here to do is to inspire you guys and just kind of encourage you guys to have fun with things, get creative and go for it. jack-o'-lanterns and I want to redo the hat in a Mackenzie Childs fashion. I'm going to lay down a base coat paint with this Waverly, Waverly white chalk paint. I just only used one coat, but I probably could have used two coats. Shout out again to my girl, April. Thank you so much for being so kind to send this paint to me. Check out how drippy and messy I am with my chalk paint. Now that it has dried, I'm going to use the painter's tape and I'm going to begin to draw out my checks. I like to start in the center. It gives me a better um, dimension on either side. So I'm just going to use my Sharpie marker to draw my checks with. Starting out with the stripes going up and down is usually how I do it. And I do have my black paint already in my little paint pan. As as well as some gold paint and some white paint. I have been using a lot of the Arteza craft acrylic paints. You can also use um, paints from Walmart with the Apple Barrel craft paint. And then I have heard some of you guys are using some other acrylic paints. So, hey, if you guys don't mind, comment down below and let me know what are your favorite acrylic paints. If you're a painter, let us know what are your favorites, what are your tried and true. I really am a beginner acrylic painter, so I'd love to hear what you guys love to use and also what are your favorite paint brushes. Um, again, I'm kind of a beginner, so I'd love to know. Now I'm starting in painting my checks and I'm just going the black checks every other one. And then to do the Mackenzie Childs paints, I have a little visitor here. Can you see that fun little fly? They love to get into my studio and really um, wreak havoc. But, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, when I do the Mackenzie Childs checks for me, I do a black um, layer first. And I always also lay down a white base coat first. Now I'm going in with this gold layer around the edge of the hat. And then I like to also do a little bit of white and gold. So I take my brush and I drag some white and gold and black to do my second layer. That to me is my personal interpretation of how their checks look. 
Um, if you look at their checks, they usually have a little bit of white and black and gold. Now for this little stacked topiary, I did want to add some lights to it. So I just took this drill and I drilled holes in the eyes of the little light up pumpkin. I actually shared this with you guys last year, but I thought it'd be worth sharing again because maybe you don't want to paint the hat, but you'd like to do the little um, light up part to it. So these are so easy. You just drill holes in and then you take one of the little Dollar Tree um, light up battery operated um, goodie lights and you can pull those little leaves off, pop the um, lights into the holes, and then just tape it to the back. I did have one of you guys comment last year too, and let me know to use electrical tape, not the duct tape that I originally showed you guys. So do use electrical tape on this DIY um, to be safe. Um, so just a little side note there for you guys on that, but have fun with this. Oh, and I also wanted to give a shout out. Somebody in my group page did share um, this pumpkin topiary and they did do the Mackenzie Child style hat. And I apologize, I did not get the name of who shared that DIY, but that was the inspiration for me. Thank you for inspiring me to do that. We have a lot of posts in the group page. So I am sorry that I neglected. Um, but if you see this, please comment down below so I can give you some credit there on that. Here is how it looks so popped into here. So fun and fabulous. And I hope to share with you guys more Mackenzie Child's projects um, because I have been having so much fun. I really wanna do Mackenzie Child's topiary. I know the stripes are fun and cool, but I think it'd be really cute with the checkerboard fashion. And how cute are those little witch looks? They are gonna end up going on top of a Christmas tree very soon. I have been working Working on for you guys. Oh my goodness. So for this next Dollar Tree DIY, I have one of these signs from the Dollar Tree and it says love each moment. And I do love this sign. I actually picked up two because I want to save one for Valentine's Day. They had them recently out in my store, but the other one I wanted to turn into a really pretty fall decor idea. So I took one of those styrofoam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I cut it in half. And then I'm taking this pretty bit of lamb's ear. It was a little bit too large to add. So I just kind of had to cut it down and so really I'm just using like one little piece off of our garland and I'm just kind of piecing it apart and adding it into the base of my little pumpkin and into the top as well so I'm basically making like a little blooming pumpkin and just kind of having fun and going for it I really like to save little bits and bobs and put them in my craft stash so these are some of those mini pine cones that came out of another another Dollar Tree bag of goodies and I realized I needed to kind of put in some red because the L on the love had some red in it so I'm trying to pull in some hues with this cute little pumpkin and basically I'm just adding detail to it so think about this you guys can really take pretty much any little sign and cut a pumpkin in half add it to the sign and really make a cute false sign add in some pine cones and some greenery some leaves some other mini pumpkins you know whatever floats your boat and hey there you guys have a fun little decoration on a total <laughs> budget so I hope you guys are loving these DIYs and you know comment and let me know which was your favorite one in this video and which one will you be recreating I'm so excited to see and hear what you guys are up to thank you guys for everybody that's posting over my Livy's romantic home Facebook group page and I have a secret question for this video as always I just really try to have you guys fill up my comment section with positive vibes we can just all use more positive vibes and goodness in this world so today's um, secret question is going to be what is your dream vacation what vacation have you always dreamed of taking drop it down in the comment section below let's do some vacation dreaming no matter where you're at you can always have dreams and hopes and joy for the future and we are looking forward to the future with now for the next Dollar Tree DIY I have to share with you all this super easy Dollar Tree DIY if you happen to go into the Dollar Tree grab one of their carpet floor mats um, this one it says welcome on one side so it's preserved to say welcome on one side but you can flip it over get a blank space or just grab a blank mat they have them in the automotive section and also like the little home decor department section um, and grab one of those Dollar Tree felt I guess they're placemats and just a bottle of spray paint whatever you have in your stash I had a can of white and so the mat that I'm using is gray and you lay that felt pumpkin down and then you can spray paint 
any color that you want to make your mat. So um, the sky's the limit on this one, truly. And I think these are so magical. I've shared with, um, some of these with you guys before on different placemats and how you guys can make a mat, but it never ceases to amaze me. I feel like I'm just so easily impressed, I guess, with the ease of some of these crafts anyway, but I had to share with you guys some easy crafts in this video, but look at that. I feel like it's magical. Cinderella, here we are. I think I'm going to call this actually my Cinderella mat. Now look how adorable it looks on top of a buffalo check plaid mat. This one is actually from Hobby Lobby. So the um, pumpkin mat looks kind of small, but it's really a sweet idea and also be cute to grab some orange spray paint and do this in orange, which I do need to pick up some orange spray paint for my stash, but I think this is an adorable DIY. It only cost a couple bucks and it's super fun and really magical. Now Dollar Tree also sells different um, placemats. They sell leaves and owls and sunflowers. You guys can take your pick and really have fun and go for it. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these thankful and blessed pumpkin signs. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree and you guys, all stores should have these. They usually have them out and they don't usually get bought up, but I will tell you to grab a couple of extra ones because you can make topiaries and snowmen out of them. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take some of this beautiful craft paper and I'm just going to trace out the shape of my pumpkin and then using my scissors, I'm just going to cut out the pumpkin. Now, I will tell you a little trick you may want to do you may want to cut a little bit extra around where you traced out the pumpkin shape um, just because it kind of helps if you cut too little then you've got that um, pumpkin part showing through but anyway have fun with it cut you a beautiful little pumpkin um, a pretty you know whatever color or pattern that you love in your paper. This paper is from Hobby Lobby and I'm using a generous amount of Mod Podge. And then I'm going to pop my little paper onto the front of my pumpkin and voila, check out how gorgeous this pumpkin is. Why have I not been doing these before now? Anyway, I'm going to add a generous layer of Mod Podge on top of this as well. I may use this in my bathroom. So I'm using waterproof Mod Podge. You can get waterproof Mod Podge at your local craft stores. And that way, you know, if a little bit of water gets on it, it's not going to ruin it. So the next thing I wanted to do was really razzle dazzle and glam up the stem of my pumpkin. So I'm adding some more Mod Podge and then I'm just going to pop some glitter onto the top of that. So I'm adding some glitter onto the top of my little pumpkin stem. You could wrap it in burlap if you wanted more of a rustic glam look, but I had to get out my glitter today. I just couldn't resist. The next thing I'm doing is making this cute little loopy bow by just making loops and then hot gluing the loops together and then I'm going to pop that onto the side of my little pumpkin here. Now I'm really going to get jazzy with it and add in a jewel. These jewels are from totallydazzle.com. I love Natalie. She's the owner. It's a small business, so she's amazing. I'm going to leave a link down in my description box for you guys to check out her jewels. She runs amazing sales and literally her jewels are like $1.50 each and they're gorgeous, you guys. And they come on brooches. I usually detach the brooch part. Um, but anyway, I re-added my little leaf to this as well. And so there's that little glittering leaf leaf. Now I am just crushing on the amount of variety that the stores are finally starting to put out for fall. So Dollar Tree is even putting out a crushed velvet kind of pink colored pumpkin. I'm probably going to do more traditional in my living room and whatnot, but definitely in my little office space and possibly my bedroom and bathroom, we're going to have some flares of pink pumpkins or roses or just something different. Um, I will again go traditional in my larger space spaces in my home, but when it comes to my little spaces, I definitely want to do something that has just a little bit of a flair of something different and that cute little wow factor. So I hope you guys are inspired to take a walk on the rose side with this one. <laughs>
Now for this next DIY, I want to share with you all how to take a styrofoam pumpkin. Now this styrofoam pumpkin actually was from Walmart. They're five bucks and I'm just going to cut the top out so you can use any styrofoam pumpkin. You can probably find them at um, your local craft stores as well. And then I'm going to take some of these cute little Dollar Tree picks. I'm starting out with some leaf picks and then I'm going to use some of these cute little orange tall stringy picks and then some cute little sunflowers. So I was actually at, it was a um, a vintage marketplace and they had a really cute display that they had made inside of a pumpkin and I know this is probably nothing new but for some reason with all of my crafting I think I've never done this one before and you guys might see some awkward mom dancing behind this arrangement that's me awkward mom dancing and I promise you I really don't have to go to the bathroom it looks like it but I love to jam out um, to some praise and worship music or just some fun music depending on what kind of mood I'm in it could be anywhere from Janet Jackson to Laura Daigle. I mean, I love all kinds of music. So anyway, but I'm adding in just some kind of like little prongy looking um, longer stringier <laughs> florals. Oh, I don't know what these are. I'm not, I want to say cattails, but I know those aren't cattails. Anyway, drop a comment down below if you guys know what these are. But I, anyway, I'm just adding in fall florals, sunflowers, and they have these little mini mums at Dollar Tree and they come in this kind of greenish color, like a lime greeny color. I thought they looked kind of nice against the orange and the yellow so it's keeping things still a little bit summery but then that little pumpkin down there is going to scream fall and to make it look more fall when I want to and I'm ready to I can pull some of you know the brighter colors out and just add in some more folly colors if that's even a word I'm not sure it's folly a word <laughs> you guys let me know but anyway so I have this little arrangement going here I like to fluffy duffy it around I did notice when I was filming that I maybe need to you know kind of work on a little bit of the front of it so when I film you guys can see the front part of it and sometimes I always can't see the best part of the front part of it anyway so now we're gonna go ahead and make a bow so I'm gonna use my easy bow maker and this cute little ribbon from Hobby Lobby I actually was gonna use this really adorable pumpkin ribbon you guys probably saw me looking around for it couldn't find it <laughs> and then found it of course once my project was done does that ever happen to you guys anyway the bow maker is amazing um, you guys can pretty much find find them anywhere, craft stores, Amazon, Deco Exchange, but it really helps out your tired fingers. If you're a busy crafter like me, or you're just lazy like me as well. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to make about a six inch bow and then I'm gonna make it about an inch smaller. So five inch and then about four inches. I don't wanna overwhelm this arrangement with too much bow although it did seem pretty large once I got it in here. But I do like to also dovetail the ends on my ribbon. And by dovetailing the ends, you can see I'm just taking and I'm folding it and then cutting a triangle in an upwards direction. If you like to make and sell your crafts and give them away, it's a nice, very nice finishing touch. I've always done this in my um, wreaths and whatnot. It just makes things look, you know, a little bit more boutique gorgeous. Okay, so now that we have that all finished up, I'm just going to go ahead and pull this ribbon off and I'm going to add it in. Now what I did is I attached the ribbon to just a stray piece of floral, um, you know, one of the little floral picks. It didn't have a uh, floral on the end of it. I hope that makes sense. And then I just popped it into this arrangement. I did add a little bit more ribbon in and around the top. And then there you guys have that a fun and fabulous little blooming floral. Now listen, I really feel like this could be something that, you know, you might see at your grocery store florist or in a little boutique. And really it looks pretty nice um, for the amount that we spent. So I mean, grab some florals from Dollar Tree and a cute little styrofoam pumpkin. They should have them out at Walmart. If they don't have them out now, they should have them out soon. Um, and make a pretty floral, add a cute little bow. Just have fun with it, get creative and go for it. for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure it is a true blessing and an honor to have you all here listen if you all are new welcome i'm olivia's olivia's from Bay tech home and i'm a diy crafty mama i love to share with you guys how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget and for everybody that comes back and is part of this community and that loves on me thank you for lifting me up thank you for encouraging me supporting me and also thank you for encouraging and supporting others in the comment section by being kind and positive with your words and all 
of that fun stuff. So definitely consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you love to craft and decorate on a budget. And also don't forget to follow me over on Facebook. I share several DIY videos a day with you guys over there, as well as I have a free little group page if you guys want to inspire each other and others to craft and decorate on a budget. Pop over to my Instagram as well. I share a good morning cup of coffee with you every morning with my Dollar Tree prayer card. So anyway, I love y'all to the moon and back. I'm hugging all of your hearts so tight. Thank you for being here. It's a true blessing and honor. And until our next video, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.